Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. You know what we're here for. This is another Bond community discussion. And I'm so excited because today I have David Lee from the James Bond dossier. David, welcome. Hi there, David. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, it is a pleasure, and I'll tell you, it is an incredible pleasure. David and I were just talking before we, we started recording this about how many years we've been kind of mutually watching each other. And I do know that for, for David, we want to get to know him a little bit better. If you're not initiated, the James Bond dossier is an amazing, amazing resource for news and newsletters and video and information. And I mean, when you want news and you want cutting edge news that is going to be um, up to the minute, David and the James Bond dossier really deliver it, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram. He's done an amazing job. And it really started with some very simple roots. And that's what I love about it. It actually it, it started with this little very familiar car right here when David. Oh, oh look at that. He's got one as well. Everybody needs one. Eight years old. Uh, an eight-year-old David went to school. His friend had one of these. He didn't really know about James Bond. He had to get one. Poor guy with his dad bought it. It was missing the little man. It was really sad. They went back down and got not only a car with a man, but an extra little man. Maybe it crawled into the box. Who knows? And then that got him going. It catapulted him to the world of uh, Ian Fleming, the books, Casino Royale being his first one. And then, of course, the films, The Man with the Golden Gun. And, and David, what I love about you is you really paint a story. And you painted a story about what was your first with James Bond. So we've got to start with a very simple basic, like how did those first really develop into the James Bond dossier? And what is the James Bond dossier? Okay, well, uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know how well I can actually answer that, really, because uh, a lot of it's kind of lost in the mists of time, and uh, uh, we're kind of a few decades on, so uh, my memory's not what it was. <laughs> but uh, it, the, the Aston Martin DB5, the, the Corgi toy, uh, just really sparked my imagination, and uh, then I, I saw my dad had a copy of Casino Royale, so I read that when I was about eight and it went over, over my head completely. About the same time, The Man with the Golden Gun came out, so my dad took me to see that, and so uh, I was hooked. Uh, there's kind of been no going back since then. My, my main interest um, a, a long, for a lot of the time has been the books. Uh, I love the Ian Fleming books, but um, it's... You know, I, I, it's a bit of everything, and uh, you know, I can't help but be, I can't help but be interested in James Bond. It's as simple as that. So, um, back in two thousand and two, I, I, I've been in Barcelona for a few months, trying to decide what to do with the rest of my life. Basically, uh, didn't have a job lined up, and uh, uh, wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And uh, so, I, I used that time instead of thinking what I was going to do. Uh, I spent it. I spent it actually uh, setting up the first uh, iteration of the James Bond dossier. And initially, it was just the books. Uh, later on, I expanded it to the films, and a lot of that was because of Casino Royale coming out, and that really uh, got me back interested in the films again. And um, I don't know. It's uh, I, I've worked in the internet industry for uh, quite a few years anyway, and I. I was, you know, I was in, uh, involved directly in the industry back in 2008, something like that. And so uh, I always try and keep abreast of, of what's happening. And so uh, basically it was just a question of, uh, of branching out into social media, um, a, a bit of video. And uh, the, the big thing of this year really is James Bond and Friends, which, which isn't my podcast, but uh, I'm a frequent uh, contributor to, to that, which is uh, run by MI6. Yeah, I would say you're definitely a regular on there. I mean, you know, you hear all these familiar voices. You're definitely one that is when you tune in, you can expect David Lee to be talking for sure. Yeah, I, I think I've done all but three or four of them. So, uh, yeah, pretty regular, pretty regular. And I, I really, really like doing them. It, it's the kind of thing, I, even if we didn't have an audience, I think I'd do because it's just like two hours of Bond chat on a Friday night. It is amazing, and I have to imagine a lot of um, your followers enjoy it. I mean, first of all, let's let's start with uh, 2002. I mean, you've been doing this 
um, when other things were in its fledgling or not even started. And, and you really, what I loved about the James Bond dossier and what you've done even in the social um, community is you've evolved over time and you've got one hell of a database uh, for your newsletter, don't you? Um, yeah, at the moment it's about it's about five thousand um, people subscribe to that, but I I kind of trim it quite often because and a, a lot of people they, they lose interest and they're, they're not opening, so I, I just give them the option to to say yeah they are still interested or or uh, or I remove them, but uh, it so it it's it it grows it grows. Uh, slowly because because of that it it but it's fairly stable at five thousand five and a half thousand but if you trim it then it's clean which is good i mean it's it's actually oh, it, it, yeah it is clean otherwise i mean that there's a danger of, of mailing this just getting completely bloated with people who aren't interested in what you're uh talking about so uh there's no point exactly well let's let's talk about you and the bond community because you've been a part of it for so long and there's thankfully no end in sight so a couple questions. These are kind of going to be rapid fire, but you take as no, long no, as you can. That, that, that's, uh, that's why I'm doing the, the 125 fitness challenge, making sure I don't <laughs> drop dead suddenly. <laughs> Do not drop dead. We're having too much fun for sure. All right. So the bond community or the bond hobby, however you want to see it, what are some things that you absolutely love about the bond community? And what are some of the things that kind of bug you about it? Oh dear. Uh, we'll start with uh, the good stuff. Then start with the good stuff. Um, well, at, at the moment this year, what, one of the things I, I really like about it is that the, there are lo lots of people just coming together and having conversations like, like this. And uh, I, I think that's a really healthy thing to, to happen. And it, it, now when I think about it, it's a shame that perhaps it didn't happen before. But we've got a, a Bond film in production, so I, I guess you know, that that that's got everybody focused again. So uh, uh, so we're all talking Bond, we're all thinking Bond pretty much twenty four hours a day. So uh, I guess that's part of that. Um, the negative side, I, I can't really think of, of anything that um, I particularly dislike about the Bond community. I mean, it, the, it's the big things that happen on social media that um, it can give a voice to people who shouldn't really have a voice. And um, it, it, it's, it's as simple as that. They, it, you just get idiots. And uh, I've, I've got a, um, a, a zero, uh, a, a zero um, to tolerance policy. I, I just block them. I can't, I can't be bothered to talk to them. I agree. There's a there's an old saying that you don't give them oxygen. Essentially, you yeah, don't yeah, exactly, them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I agree. And, and happily, it's such a small percentage of individuals. I mean, mostly everybody else is uh, uh, uplifting. You know, which is fantastic. Yeah. Well, it, there's also the thing. Uh, there's also the thing that any time that uh, you do something, uh, something's just going to criticise for you, you for it for it anyway, whether it's valid or not. And you know, okay. There, there, there are, there can be valid criticisms and you should listen to valid criticisms, but some people are just out there to troll you. So uh, learn, you know, if anybody is thinking about doing anything on the internet, uh, whether it's social media or website or whatever, be, be prepared for criticism, but you need to be able to split the, the genuine criticism from the trolls. Yeah, it's inevitable, inevitable, especially with a lot of the, you know, more controversial subjects, if you will. Um, all right, so you clearly over time and quite 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 quickly have a global audience. I mean, it, it, you're in Barcelona, but you don't have the Barcelona audience only. You are global. So I have a question for you about that. When was the first time, if you can recall, when was the first time you realized, oh my gosh, people actually know what the James Bond dossier is. They actually know who David Lee is. Um. God, I, I don't know actually because it, when when I first started doing it, I and when I when I first had the newsletter, and I think the newsletter goes back to two thousand and seven or two thousand and eight. I, I don't remember the exact date, but I, I used to do it anonymously. I, I just used to sign it off as as M, and and that actually led to a, a bit of a weird thing because 
the, the kind of new Bond fans that were coming on, they always assumed that uh, I was female. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I, I was always thinking of Bernard Lee. So, uh, and at, so at some point I, I thought, oh, I, don't, I don't really know why, why I'm hiding my name, that there's no, I've got nothing, I've got nothing to hide. So what, why don't I just put my own name to it? Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's hysterical. Well, I dare say with through videos and obviously the podcast, they know now that you're a guy and not a woman. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so, so all the things that you've done with Bond, I mean, my gosh, for such a long time, can you, can you give us one experience that's been probably the most exciting experience that you've had? Okay. Well, uh, attending the Casino Royale premiere was a real highlight. That uh, that was a good one. Amazing, uh, uh, really, really fantastic. I, I loved it. Um, it you know they just prior to the film that the early reviews had come out and uh, they were were raving about it. And uh, so to, to actually uh, go to London and you know and mix with you know just. Bond fans, Bond fan, Bond fans, and London, London. The day of the premiere and the day before the premiere it was crazy. The, I remember I, I went to Leicester Square the, the day before the premiere, and um, they had uh, a DBS in in the centre of the uh, of the square, and it was all surrounded by fencing that was covered in the in this uh, 007 and Casino Royale um, plastic wrap and. Uh, and that, then I, I remember I went to a bookshop and there was a, a Japanese uh, camera crew in there and they were they, they were just um, shooting some footage with the Fleming books and you, it was just like you you were tripping over Bond everywhere you went and oh. uh, yes yeah, the premiere was fantastic. But, Did you get to see any celebrities? Um, after the film, yeah, well, well we, did, uh, we did the red carpet and, and all, all that. So um, I think I didn't see Daniel Craig that day, but uh, certainly saw a number of uh, a number of the uh, stars. And uh, the the other one actually though was just this year. Um, as you know, I, I didn't manage to get to the secret cinema screening. Um, I had a, I had something else going on, on then. But I was also invited to go and drive Aston Martins at, at Millbrook Proving Ground, which uh, was, uh, for, for a Bond fan to be asked to drive Aston Martins, it was uh, a no second thought. <laughs> I'd kind of booked my flight before I told my wife, I think. Yeah, and let's let's highlight that for a second, just so people understand. Um, there, what you know, Secret Cinema obviously has a Casino Royale wildcard. Um, they actually chose a handful, and I mean a handful, and, and who wound up going was Mark O'Connell and obviously David to an incredibly immersive experience with Aston Martin at a test track. So immersive, you drove different Aston Martins. I mean, that had to blow your mind. Yeah, I, I drove four different Aston Martins. I know you're, you're used to it, but uh, for oh, me, it was amazing ones. <laughs> I, I'd take yours. I, I'd take yours. You know, I, I'm not fussy. If, it, if it's an Aston Martin, it's an Aston Martin. That's true. Yeah, but um, yeah, we, we, we got to drive four different Astons. Um, uh, ben Collins was also there. He, he's a um, stunt driver for, for Bond. Um, and he, he, uh, he took a DB11 for a spin on, on a, a skid pan that they'd uh, poured water over and uh, burnt rubber on that. But then he also took you for a drive on a very, very windy track, which was pretty alarming because uh, the, the funny thing is uh, you're kind of hanging onto the seat because he's just spinning this car all over the place. Oh. And he's having a, a conversation with you just in calm tones all the time. And I, I stopped speaking. I stopped speaking because I didn't <laughs> want to put him off. He said, something up <laughs> oh my gosh that was amazing i saw the video footage that you guys all did and it was just i was so jealous it looked absolutely amazing i mean i, yeah, I would no, say that, that's better than a secret cinema moment yeah that worked that was amazing that was amazing and it, it was organized uh by it was organized by aston martin obviously but with secret cinema and eon productions so it, it was uh it, it was 
it, it's one of the best things that I've it, it's it's the best thing I've done this year for sure. Apart from this, of course. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> did they did they but, feed you? Did they give you food and everything too? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's um and it's amazing. Um, you, they they fed us lunch, refreshments, and it, it was a, it was a whole day. I think we. I think we we had to be there at nine a nine a.m. and it went through till four thirty or something like that, wow. and yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, really good. Um, and uh, the one of the circuits that uh, I drove twice is the it's a, they call it the hill circuit or the alpine circuit, and it's actually the circuit where they flipped the Aston Martin in Casino Royale, and they they had. They had to repair the road surface afterwards, and so you can you can see where it is that they pointed out as you're driving around at high speed. Unbelievable! Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's it's amazing. If we'll put up some links here where people can kind of see what you went through, it was just unbelievable. All right, so David, one thing that I have been literally drinking up is um, your book. I mean, here it is, right here. It is uh, try to get something so it's not like the sunshine coming off of it. The Complete Guide to the Drinks of James Bond, second edition, which now includes Skyfall. And I did a book review on it of some of my favorite uh, Bond summer reading because this totally blew me away. And I'll tell you why. There's drinking books out there that say, put this measure into this, put in that measure. You tie it back to Bond. You tie it back to Ian Fleming and where it shows up. I mean, it's it's as much a research book as it is a drinking book. What what was the impetus behind creating this? Oh, blimey. Well, um, I, I think well, one of the things is that uh, my, my wife has published a load of books. And so uh, because I'm fairly competitive, I thought, well, she's published a load. So uh, I think I'm going to do a book, too. And at the time, uh, there wasn't there, there wasn't any book that uh, I could find that was uh, about uh, Bond and drinks, so I just started doing that. And the the uh, the original idea was slightly different to that this because I wanted to do photography and so on. But when I looked at the cost of doing it and and self publishing, it, it it proved to be prohibitive. So uh, it, it's just text. But um, I wrote a chunk of it in I think it was 2010. Um, and then I left it because uh, I, I thought, nah, this is a stupid idea. And I, then uh, I guess it was after the summer and I thought, now nah, let me finish that book. And so I just spent, I don't know, two, three months uh, really just doing like two hours work on it a day. And, uh, and I, but I really, really wanted to dive in deep. And uh, because what, one of the things about the Fleming's books is that very often they, 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 go, they take a very detailed look at, at things. and. Uh, I, I I like that I like that style of writing, or at least I, I, I'm just interested in stuff. So it, it was just uh, finding out stuff that I didn't know about the drinks and diving in and, and putting it in the book. Yeah, I, I tell you, and I, I've said to so many people, um, what I love about this, and it's going to be hard to tell the size. I'll put it up to my face. It's not one of these giant coffee. Uh, table books. You can literally slip it into a back pocket. You could put it into a beach tote. You know, when you go to the beach, this is this is like one of these travel paperbacks you, you remember as a kid. Even the you know the pulpy smell. It's just I don't know. When I got it, I was so happy that it was this kind of you know digestible book. And but you told me just a little while ago that there's a different version of this, isn't there? There is another version, which is uh, this. Um, it's a French version of the, the book, and that came about as a result of the newsletter. And uh, there was a guy who had subscribed to the newsletter, and they contacted me about five years ago and asked if I wanted to publish the book in, in French. And uh, I couldn't see any good reason to say no to that. So um, uh, they, they translated it, and um, they were going to uh, put that into print. Uh, it was probably 2013, 2014, something like that. I, I don't remember the exact year. And um, but they, one of the things they wanted to do was put uh, photos from the films in, and mm. Eon said no, so the book got shelved. But then uh, a couple of years ago, I got an email from somebody at the same company, and she told me that the guy who had originally contacted me was now the CEO of the company, the publisher. 
wow. and they wanted to do the book. So instead of photos, uh, it's it's illustrated with uh, these uh, pictures. I don't know if there's anything good. There's uh, there's one probably I can't find it now, which uh, my my wife likes because she reckons it, it looks like her, uh, but minus the guns. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. What a great nod to her. But we're, we're going to actually put uh, a link where people can get this because it, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I've been really enjoying it. I keep going back to it. It's kind of dog-eared and bent now because it's getting a lot of good use. So thank you for creating it. Oh, uh, thank you for the review. Um, I, I was, uh, I, I was uh, astounded at how positive you were about it. I mean, I, I've always thought it was a good book, but uh, uh, it, it, it's really, really uh, it's really, really good to hear it from somebody else who, who's in the Bond community. It was great. And and you did mention before, one of the things that I know you're excited about for this year um, is obviously James Bond and Friends. You started to talk about the podcast. I have some questions about that because what I really like about the podcast, besides it being um, informative and interesting, I think the personalities on there are so different. I mean, some of them are alike and overlap, but there's so many different personalities. Um, you've got the, the literary people, you've got the production people, you've got all these different things. How do they come up with the uh, the melting pot of individuals on that? Well, uh, none of that's down to me. It, that's all down to, to James Page and, and Paul Atkinson from, from MI6. Uh, the... Paul, um, James got in contact with me and um, he, he didn't, I wouldn't say he actually pitched me the idea because th there was no question that I'd say yes to it, I, I think. But he, he said um, they wanted to do a podcast and it was basically, uh, the idea was that it was uh, a bunch of people who were, were going to the pub on a Friday and just talking Bond. And, uh, and it, it just started like that. And the, the first episode we thought was going to be like a 20 minute episode it wasn't really planned it was just we'll talk about whatever we talk about and we we publish and uh i think that ended up uh as a, an hour and three quarter recording wow wow yeah i mean they're good i know they're different lands in fact i think it went over two hours because no that that actually was that became the first two episodes yeah it was oh, they more like up. Okay. hours yeah, so, that's how you guys have it's almost like um, it's the love boat, if you will. You said it's the sports talk, which I really love. It's almost like the love boat of James Bond podcast because you've got different guest stars. You've got Calvin Dyson. I know you just had uh, Joe Darlington of being James Bond. It's so cool how people are kind of mixed and matched, and they bring something different to the table. Yeah, that, that's. I think that that's one of the advantages of it because. Um, if, if somebody can't make it one week, uh, somebody else can fill in. And so I, I think that there's always going to be enough people to, to make up the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We're, we're going to play a little bit of a game. And uh, there is no wrong answer here. But try to get as detailed as you can. So here we go. Here we go. So David Lee, you are sitting around. Could be a Saturday afternoon and the phone rings. And on the other end is Eon Productions, a very senior level executive on the other end. And they go, David, um, you have done an amazing job since 2002 with the James Bond dossier. You never asked for anything, but today is the day we're going to give you something. You are going to be granted any Bond experience that you want. You could go hang gliding with a cigar. You could interview Daniel Craig. You could be in Bond 25. It doesn't matter Whatever you want to be, you will be. Whatever experience you want, we will grant it. What is that experience? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I reckon uh, at the moment, I, re I reckon it would be to be in Bond 25. Uh, because I, I, I was thinking, I, I was thinking uh, before they announced all the locations, I, I was really hoping that they would do Barcelona or somewhere around here. And uh, in fact, I don't live in Barcelona anymore. I live closer to Girona and they shot some of the scenes for a season six of Game of Thrones there. So uh, they're, they're used to filming and it's, it's a very, very picturesque city. So 
Um, I, I, I was hoping that they'd either do Barcelona, which uh, was originally planned for Skyfall. The, the, the train crash was supposed to be in Barcelona, I believe, originally. Um, and because I, I think if they shoot in, in anywhere near me, then I'm going to I'm going to try and be an extra. So, uh, yeah, Bond 25. All right. And by the way, for the, first of all, I think that would be mine. I mean, I don't care what it is. I would be somebody running out of the way of a car. Or, I always say, you know, sweeping the streets. I don't care. But just some thing where I could go, there I am. There's that little dot. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic, we, yeah. We've, we're calling it Bond 25 out of habit. We have a title, No Time to Die. I, yes. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, what's, what's your feeling about the title? Oh, my God. Uh, my... I, I don't know if you've listened to, I, I think it's episode 19 of James Bond and Friends, but I actually proposed that as a title in mid-July. I heard that. That's right. I actually read that. I, I, I've i heard like all the episodes. I do remember that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 wish, I wish I could say I, I predicted it, but it was actually a dumb joke. <laughs> So what do you think of it now, now that you kind of had a premonition around it? Yeah, I, I, do you know, I, I was so freaked out by the fact that uh, I had um, mentioned it that uh, I don't actually know what to, what I feel about it. Uh, when, I, when, I read, when I read it was No Time to Die, it was like, hang on, I said that. And I, I still haven't got over that. So I, I may have that put on my tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> first, first watch the movie, and then you can determine that. You don't want Spectre or something on there. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I want to give this last bit to you because – one of the things that I think all of us, and by the way, we're going to put tons of links down here below. So for those of you poor saps who have not explored uh, David Lee's wonderful creation, the James Bond dossier, you can do it. But obviously, you know, you're constantly evolving. So what what's the future hold? What's the vision for the James Bond dossier? What can we expect? God. Uh, vision. <laughs> I, I don't think there is, is a vision really. It's uh, the, the main, I, I think the main driver really is that I'm not really somebody who can just sit by and watch uh, other people do things. Uh, I need to get involved. So um, I, I, because I, because I recognized the internet was going to be very important in the mid 90s, I, I, I jumped from what I was doing and got into the industry. And so uh, I've always, I'm, I'm always exploring what's going on on the, on the internet. Although one thing I kind of missed was Instagram. Uh, I've only really started doing that this year. And uh, God, I, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. With. <laughs> and, I wish it was a handbook or something like that. I know there's a couple yeah, of YouTube videos. Uh, I, th there are loads of articles online uh, telling you how to do Instagram and uh I think most of them are rubbish, to be honest. And uh, and because one thing I don't get is, uh, you know, sometimes I can I can publish content on there, and my my followers don't increase at all. And then uh, there'll be some other content, and then I get like twenty new people following me, and I, I don't under I don't understand it because it's the same kind of content. So um, yeah, I, I'm learning. I'm with you, I'm with you on that. There are, there are times when I'll do a video on my YouTube channel where I, it takes me so long and it's highly produced and I'm thinking like, oh, this is gonna go like gangbusters and it's like, Psss. and then all of a sudden I'll do a quick box open review thinking like, well, that was done in 15 minutes and it'll skyrocket. So there's no rhyme or reason, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, 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 and because uh, you're, you're way, way ahead of me on that. But because uh, I, did, I, I did look at Instagram say, three years ago, something like that. And I set up the account and I, I did start posting stuff, but uh, I got up to like 500 followers, but there didn't really seem to be very much uh, Bond related going on. So I I just stopped looking at it. And then uh, I think I came back to it in end of last year or maybe beginning of this year. And it's like, oh, what's happened? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a new movie that's pulling people in. It's amazing. Well, David, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for spending time. This is great um, and really appreciate the time you, you shared with us today. Oh, thank you for having me on, David. It's, it's been a pleasure.
Excellent. All right, this has been David Lee for the James Bond dossier and David Zaritsky for the Bond experience, and we will see you all very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.